Welcome back everyone. My name is Dean Parsons, certified science instructor for ICS 515 and ICS 418. In today's ICS security brief, we're going to be talking about applying the active cyber defense cycle to control environments. Now specifically, ACDC does have five different steps and this makes it a repeatable process. In this process, we do have threat intelligence consumption, visibility, threat detection, incident response, and threat environment manipulation. We're going to be using dedicated analysts who are going to be monitoring for, responding to, and learning from adversaries and threats internal to the control network. But how do you apply these steps? Let's walk through it together. We have an example of a no-cost threat intelligence report from CISA, and this one specifically refers to the Hatman Trisis Triton malware targeting safety instrumented system and control system environments. Upon consuming the threat intelligence information, we do know that it does have a detection rule written for Yara. This allows us to scope our environment to look for things like traces of the attack and this malware specifically. Now, specifically, there's two areas it can scope. One is on the Windows OT system component for the malware, but also looks for the binary component as well uh, that the adversaries use to manipulate the programmable logic controller. So right away with threat intelligence consumption, we know there is a threat out there. It is targeted through the industrial control system area, targeting safety instrumented system assets in the engineering environments. And the capability of this threat is modifying in-memory firmware to malicious logic programming from the adversary's perspective. We know as well that a safety instrumented system, if compromised, could result in physical damage and safety consequences. Now, moving from threat intelligence, and we're going to go into visibility. Visibility allows us to look in the network to look for suspicious activity. Having that visibility here, we can see we're looking at the network, and specifically, we see the tri-station protocol operating as you'd expect under normal circumstances, operating on UDP port 1502. Now, this is the communications between the engineering workstation and the Triconics safety instrumented system PLCs. So the question in the visibility stage here is, do you have the visibility on the network to see control system uh, traffic in the environment um, and determine if it's legitimate or not? Beyond visibility, of course, you can use visibility with threat intelligence consumption to then get you to threat detection. This is where you can put that ER rule to use in the environment to scope the environment to see if you have malicious activity. But the question is, where would you run the ER rule? Where would you look for detection of this threat? Based on the threat intelligence information, the engineering workstation would be a great place to start because it does have access to the safety instrumented systems. Beyond the engineering workstation, though, look for any devices that does have specific network access to the safety instrumented systems, which could be a Windows OT device. Of course, when we do threat detection, we are going to find something in the visibility aspect from the traffic or also on an OT asset themselves. From here, we're going to be doing incident response. Incident response has started, which is where engineering teams and ICS defense teams work together to isolate critical uh, segments of the network. This is where you're going to be fighting through the attack to maintain safety and reliability of operations. During this phase here, you can come across things like malware analysis to do further detection and containment, which leads us to threat and environment manipulation. This phase of the active cyber defense cycle enables the analyst to safely manipulate a threat. That could mean more additional malware analysis to understand what the threat does. Reversing that malware to understand, oh, there's a C2 command and control that's used as part of the threat. Here's where you can change the environment or change the threat to reduce the impact. So taking a C2 IP address from analysis as an example and blocking those on firewalls or doing additional scoping is the appropriate thing to do where necessary. Operate from the plant floor is also a possibility. Again, you're changing things in the environment or changing the threat to reduce its habitable nature in the environment. You could also disable remote access where applicable as well and identify any architectural opportunities where safety instrumented systems best be on their own network itself separated out from the environment. So to recap, the ACDC requires at least passive ICS aware visibility and the control system traffic level. Dedicated and ICS aware defenders who know some of the engineering aspects, but also the ICS security as well. Beyond that, again, executing the ACDC, that five steps are the threat intelligence consumption, visibility, threat detection, incident response, and threat and environment manipulation. 
Well, there you have it. That's a quick run through of the active cyber defense cycle in control system environments. Hopefully that's been helpful and I hope to see you in class soon.